morning. Welcome on this beautiful day to Unity of Springfield's uh, online live streaming service. So glad to have everybody here. You were listening to Stow Good. I love that first song, Born Winner. It's that reminder that we have everything that we need in this life to achieve whatever it is that is desiring to emerge through us. And then that second song, Lean Into It. Lean into what it is that you are really desiring in your life. So uh, it was great yesterday to see so many of you out there. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but we're going to go ahead and see what Mitch has to share with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. It is October, so we all know what that means. Carrie makes me watch scary movies so I get bad sleep. Yeah. Well, I tell you what's scarier than the undead rising. I was watching the news, but that's all right. We'll just keep plugging right along. We can do it together, people. We can do it together. Yes. If you would please join me in our mission statement. Our mission is to encourage and inspire spiritual and personal growth by empowering each other to be authentically all that we came here to be. And now our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, omnipotent. And now if you please join me in the Boy Scouts motto, be prepared. Good job, everyone. Uh, our daily word and affirmation today, our affirmation is, I meet my life with a bright outlook. Life is good. And that is true. Uh, our daily word is, life is good and beautiful. When I look at the world with optimism, my heart is light, my smile is bright, and my day is full of good cheer. On any given day, the sky may be filled with clouds instead of sunshine, but I decide whether to name it the weather good or bad. Even if clouds are in the way, the sun is always shining. Similarly, I choose how to view the changing conditions of my life. If sickness appears, wholeness is still my underlying truth. Behind any experience of lack lies an ever-expanding source of wealth. I always look for the good in life, even when it is hidden. I affirm the positive and call it forth. I meet my life with optimism. Proverbs 17.22 is our spookily related uh, uh, scripture today. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. That's a metaphor you don't hear too often, dries up the bones. <laughs> If you would please join me in our prayer. Uh, this week, prayer is requested for Aiden, Minetta, Josh, Kay, Ashley, Macy, Mary Lou, Sarah, Diane and her mother Judy, Chuck, Anne, Beth, Jeannie, Wayne and Michelle, Alex. <sighs> Gently close your eyes and take a deep breath. Becoming centered in the presence of God in us, as us, and through us. The knowledge of the presence of God calms and soothes our very being and allows us to feel safe and secure. We breathe deeply again and forgive all we believe have wronged us, including ourselves, and release any unease for the present and future. We dedicate this prayer to the equality, the acceptance, the respect of all peoples on this earth. We take time to visualize the healing of the planet. To visualize the healing of our country, the healing of bodies, minds, and affairs for all. We also unfold and infuse ourselves with love so that we have the capacity to love others. We choose to be generous, to be kind, to be understanding, to be open to all, especially those whose beliefs or needs may be different from ours. We are infinitely grateful for all our blessings and we accept and rejoice in the blessings for the future. Life is good. God is good. And so it is and ever will be. Amen. Please know that you can request prayer for yourself or a loved one by calling the church at 417-887-2214 and leaving a message. Or you can email us at ccunity at sbcglobal.net. You can also slide a note under the door uh, with a little check that says, pray for me, check mark. And that's good. A little thing. That's good. Little, little thing, little thing. So I hope you guys have a great week. I am going to. Uh, I, I've got a nap in the plan. I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna I take a nap. That's my plan today. I hope you guys have a good plan today. Maybe on the floor. I don't know. I don't know if I deserve to sleep in the bed. Uh, kind of restless last night. Anyway.
great to talk to you all. I hope you have a lovely day and a marvelous week. Take care of yourselves. Namaste. And thank you, as always, Mitch, always brings that smile to our face, just like you said, Clay. And we love that. You know, humor is good for us. So uh, now we're entering into that time of meditation. So as Paul rings our prayer bowl, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and to take a couple of deep centering breaths. thing that we have here, this prayer bowl that is our call to move within. It is our call to let go of activities later in the day, of any worries or concerns, and to just bring ourselves fully into this now present moment and to merge our head and our heart to take this, this mind of ours that wants to go in a lot of different directions and to move it down into that heart space, into that, what I like to call the sacred sanctuary of our soul. Into this space within our beingness where first of all, we know that we are not alone. that we are immersed in, we are surrounded by, that we literally are emanations of what we say every week, the one presence and one power. That is God, that is all good. And in this merging of our head and our heart space, bringing our mind into this sacred sanctuary, into this place where we do know that there is only God, there is only love. It is here that we can relax and we can let go. It is here that we can place any of our concerns. It is here that we remember that no matter what is occurring outside of us, even what is occurring inside of our bodies that truly at this moment this divine intelligence that we call God or Holy Spirit love, mother, father source, universe that it is at this moment taking everything and weaving it into the greater tapestry of good for ourselves and for everyone In these moments, we affirm that God is good. God is for us. God is infinite and endless love, that love that is without beginning and that love that is without end and that love that is purely unconditional. And I invite you in these moments just to let yourself relax into this love. This love that holds you every moment of your life. This love that will never withhold itself from you. This love that desires the the best for you. This love that will never forsake you or leave you. This love that sees you as you are and sees its perfection and is truly at this moment well pleased. God is good. My life is good. 
Let us move into about a minute of silence and just feel that love rising up from within you, this love that is pouring down upon you. Let yourself be saturated at this moment with this divine and perfect love in the silence. You are a magnificent creation of God. You are beautiful. You are powerful. You are enough. Just as you are in this moment. And you matter. Take in a nice deep breath. With an audible sigh. Ah. <sighs> And I invite you to come back into these moments and anchor in to this feeling and anchor in to this knowing. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen. Before we go into our uh, first music, I want to share a few things with you. Uh, we are online. Actually, that should say through October. Um, our goal is to come back together November 8th, and that's a flexible goal uh, depending on where everything is at with COVID, but that's going to be our focus is coming back together on November 8th, and we will keep you informed about that. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who helped to make our first annual Earth Day 5K a great success. We had about 48 runners out there uh, yesterday morning. And um, what a wonderful, wonderful uh, event and experience that was. So thank you to everyone who uh, helped to create that. And also for our yard sale that went along with it. There are so many people I would not be able to name all of you. I do want to say a special thank you to Lisa Landrigan, who is our awesome and amazing volunteer coordinator, who just has this amazing uh, ability to organize everything and to stay calm through it all. And um, uh, Mary Hilsebeck Huber for saying yes to overseeing the yard sale. And it was an incredible success. I know that we made at least $1,600, I think, and maybe even more. And I think we're in the black on our um, Earth Day 5k but we'll let you know next week um how much we made on that so we're just so grateful because we are open to our good that comes to us from anywhere and everywhere uh also a huge thank you to duncan sappington who is mary hilsbeck huber's son who spent the night friday night to keep our stuff safe um all night but there are so many so just thank you thank you thank you thank you uh do want to remind you that we are doing a collection of coats and blankets for the Connecting Grounds. The Connecting Grounds is a church that helps homeless people in our community. You can bring coats and blankets and gloves, just anything that you think would be needed, uh, even, uh, sleeping bags, backpacks. Bring it to the church Sunday, October 18th from 1 to 2 p.m. And uh, if you can't bring it then, let us know and, and we will make sure to get those. And just a reminder that our little library is a food pantry and uh, we are having people use it. So if you can bring some food, that would be great. So now we're going to hear John Ross and our awesome band. And um, John is going to be singing Blue Boat Home by Peter Mayer. One, two. Why do you 
to John and our band. We always love and appreciate all the energy that you put into what you bring to us every week with our great music. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You know, there's another song that we sing sometimes. And it's our rap formation. My life is good and it just keeps getting better. My life is good and it just keeps getting better. My life is good and it just keeps getting better. My life is good and it just keeps getting better. You know, you can trade those words out and say, my health is good and it just keeps getting better. My workplace is good and it just keeps getting better. My clarity is good and it just keeps getting better. My body is good and it just keeps getting better. America is good and it just keeps getting better. So today is about our lives are good and they just keep getting better and that life is good, that God is good all the time. Now I know that when we're in the midst of a flow, it's easy to say that and even when sometimes things are a little bit out of sync, it's easy for us to say that. It's a little harder to do when things feel like they're falling apart. You know, when there's a death of a loved one, when we get a diagnosis either for ourselves or for somebody else, or we lose a job or the economy tanks, or when um, a health challenge occurs, when a terrorist attack happens, or natural disasters are occurring, or we're in the midst of a pandemic, or in the midst of, for me, one of the most divisive times um, that I've ever experienced in our country. You know, these things don't feel good, but that's not what today is about. Life doesn't always feel good. And you know what? I want to tell you that that's okay. That throughout our lives, we're going to find ourselves experiencing a lot of emotions. 
we're going to experience sadness and and frustration. We're going to experience um, pain and hurt and overwhelmment. We're going to feel disempowered. We're going to feel fearful and confused. We're going to question our faith. We're going to question uh, God. And what I want to say is it's okay that all of these feelings and emotions are perfectly normal, that you are not a less enlightened soul because you experience these things. In fact, you are very normal. Part of my ministry, that one of the things that has been really important for me is to encourage us to live from our true identity, from our spiritual nature. Um, but for me, that's also for me to encourage us to accept and embrace that we are physical expressions now and to allow ourselves to embrace and allow ourselves to experience this human journey and all the things that go along with this human journey. You know, it would be great, I know, if we thought that we could say, hey, yeah, life feels good all the time. Um, but that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that life is good all the time. And the reason that we know that is because we know that all things do work together for the greater good. And why do we know this? Because of the statement that we make every week, that is there's only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives, God the good, omnipotent. Now, some of you grew up with that knowledge and how blessed are you that that has been your lifelong knowing. But most of us have a background on good and evil. Most of us have a background that there was a devil, something that was, you know, trying to get us. Uh, I shared this before, but I thought this was so interesting. It was on a children's website and I thought, my goodness, to give the kids this message. But it, on this website, it says, we are in a battle. We have an enemy who wants to steal everything God wants us to have. Only it's not a battle we can see. Our enemy is Satan and Satan lives in the invisible world of, of the spirit. Even though we can't see him, Satan is very real, and he wants nothing more than to take us away from God. And Satan is sneaky. He will use every trick to get us to turn away from God. You don't have to be afraid of Satan, but you have to be ready to fight him. <laughs> I remember reading that and just going, are you kidding me? You know, you just put the fear of Satan in these kids, and then you say you don't have to be afraid of them. So I want to um, talk for a few minutes about what it, do we believe about good and evil? You know, do we do we take that literally? Does evil exist and what is evil? Um, so I went, of course, to Charles Fillmore, our co-founder, um, in Christian Healing, and here's what he wrote. If we think that evil exists as a power in the world that is working in our lives and in the lives of those about us, we make it an act of force and it appears to be all that we imagine it. Be wise, pronounce nothing evil, and only good will come. Evil is the subjective label we give to events we do not understand, and it is usually the result of humans misusing their God-given powers. Evil does not endure. Evil originates in the human consciousness as a result of the misuse of our freedom of thought, Evil is the manifest result of our error thoughts. And he goes on to say that evil is a parasite and it only stays alive as long as the parent is continuing to feed it, as long as we are putting that energy in to it. And, you know, for me, it's just the recognition that we have been given free will, my friends. And we all get to use these, these powers that we are imbued with whatever way we choose. And when we choose, when we are only coming from the ego, when we are only coming from this place of, you know, what is, what is best for me, what is best for the people around me, when we don't care that we hurt other people, that's when we're misusing that. And that's what we would look at as being evil. It's simply um, not being in alignment with, with God and with the goodness and with love. So how does good and bad, how does this all fit into our life experience? Well, when we look at the beginning of the Bible, God created both the dark and the light, the day and the night. And guess what? God called it good because both are needed. Ricky Byers Beckwith has, she's a, a new thought um, musician, and she has a song called It All Fades um, Into God. And I love, she has one sentence in there that says, the seed will need the darkness 
to change into new life. And, you know, I, I love that. I've always loved that sentence because it reminds me that that seed, that hardened seed has got to go into that dark, cold place where it's going to have to give way to the outer shell in order for that new life to emerge. And we don't really like that dark place. We don't really like that place where things are falling apart. And we get so focused on that that we forget to focus on the fact that something greater is emerging there. The the dark or the shadow or what we call, you know, sometimes the bad parts of our life are not something that are bad or against us. It's all here for our greater good. And if you've been with us on Wednesday nights, we've been talking about this for five weeks now, that no one and nothing is against us. And when we get that, and when we start looking at life from that perspective, we're not so mired down in the, in the yuck part of it. Um, in her book, The Wings of Possibility, Creating Your Life from a Higher Point of View, Reverend Eleanor Carty says that when we say that life is good, not good in the way that we necessarily want it to continue in the way that it's going, but good in the sense that something positive will come from it that we are not yet able to see. You know, it's that idea that there are things happening in this invisible realm that we cannot see with our physical eyes, but we focus not on what is seen, but we focus on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but that which is unseen, it is eternal. It has been, it is, and it always will be. And she reminds us that a, surf, a situation that seems awful on the surface may have something potentially magnificent hidden beneath that surface waiting to be revealed. And I'm going to say, not just may have, it will have something because more than one thing is occurring at any given time. And again, it's that, it's that thing for us where we get so focused on the pain and we get so focused on the falling apart, we get so focused on the fear that we forget that there is something else that is occurring. And that's really the movement today. That's why we can say things like God is good all the time and my life is good and it just keeps getting better. That life is good and it just keeps getting better. Because we can know that that which we see right now, it is temporal. But that amazing, magnificent potentialities and possibilities are occurring that we cannot see. You know, for many, hitting the bottom is the beginning of recovery. And when we seem to be falling apart, what we can know is that something new is getting ready to be birthed um, through each of us. Um, I love the story of a, a daughter and a mother, and the daughter was telling her mom, you know, just life wasn't going good, and that her boyfriend had broken up with her. She was having a hard time in algebra. Her best friend was moving away and her mother said, I'm so sorry to hear this, honey. Would you like a snack? And the daughter said, oh yes, please, mom. And so she said, here, drink some of this vegetable oil. And the daughter was like, gross, mom. She said, well, okay, how about some raw eggs? And her mom said, that's disgusting. And her mom said, well, hey, how about some baking soda or some flour? And the daughter said, mom, those things are all yucky. And the mother responded by saying this, yes, all those things seem bad all by themselves, but when they are put together in the right way, they make a wonderfully delicious cake. And what we can know is that spirit works the same way, that many times we wonder why we have to go through the things that we have to go through, the bad and the difficult times. But when we lean into the knowledge that all things are working together for the greater good, then we just trust and eventually what we find is that something wonderful comes out of that which had to break down. So the story that I think really best um, explains this in the Bible is the story of Joseph. So this is the good and bad. So Joseph was the youngest of 12 sons of Jacob, and he was highly favored by his father. And he was given a coat of many colors. Well, Joseph had a dream that his whole family ended up bowing down to him. And unfortunately, he shared this, and his brothers did not like that. So his brothers became very jealous. So they took his coat from him, and they sold him to merchants, which was bad. Well, he was sold to Potiphar, and who was one of the Pharaoh's officials, where he prospered, and he was entrusted by Potiphar to oversee everything. So that was good. Then Potiphar's wife became attracted to Joseph, 
and she began to put moves on him. And Joseph knew that was not going to be good for anything, so he did not return that. But then there was the scorned wife, and so he got thrown into the king's prison, which was bad. So while he was there, he ended up with two of the king's court who had dreams which Joseph was able to uh, to interpret. This was the cupbearer and the baker, and he told them to remember him. And three days later, the dreams came true. This was good. The cupbearer forgot about him, which was bad. <clears throat> two years later, and sometimes just recognize it may take some time, the Pharaoh had two dreams which nobody could interpret. And the cupbearer remembered Joseph. So they sent for Joseph. Joseph was able to interpret the Pharaoh's dreams, and he was ultimately put in charge of the palace and of all of Egypt, only answerable to the Pharaoh himself. This was really good. So seven good years go by, and in that seven years, Joseph goes and he collects all kinds, in Egypt, collects all kinds of grain and food and stores up as much as he can, which was good. Well, after the seven years, a famine hit, and there was no food for anybody, and the people were starving, which was bad. However, because Joseph had saved up all the food and the grain, there was plenty for the people to eat. Why was there plenty for the people to eat at that particular point in time? Because years earlier, the brothers, who were jealous, used their free will to, um, to sell Joseph into slavery. Genesis 50, 20 says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. This is such a great lesson for us to remember because we all have had these experiences of good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. But again, it's when we can look back and we can see that that which I called some of the worst things that were breaking apart in my lives in my life actually ended up being something that was for the greater good, not only of myself, but of people around me. So rule number one, and you can say this with me, God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Rule number two, when things seem to go wrong, refer back to rule number one. And I'm gonna invite you to say these next two things with me together. Life is good all the time and my life is good and it just keeps getting better. So I love uh, Mike Dooley and he does these notes from the universe. And, uh, and so there's a couple that I wanted to share with you and has my name on it, but put your name on it. One is it's always been easy to love you, Sue. The challenge has come from granting you so much freedom that at times you might not know that I do. I always have. The universe. The reason that I thought this was an important one is because I think we forget that. We forget that you know, we are we are God's expressions here in this realm. And we have been given the really the highest gift of life as human beings on this planet. Like this is a this is an amazing, magnificent opportunity that that we have been given. And that this creator loves its creation and its desires for its creation to experience it. It, it experiences itself through us as us. I also love this one. The reason that things always work out for the best is because this is actually the highest of all spiritual laws. Any apparent exceptions are simply evidence that work is still in progress, whether or not it can be seen always the universe. And, you know, as we look around at things that have been happening all around us in our country, and, um, you know, what we can see is that a lot of the things that are happening are bringing an awareness that are creating change, a change that has been needed for a long time. It doesn't mean that that those things were were good, quote unquote, or that they felt good but it does mean that we always have an opportunity to use things for the greater good. John 12, 24 says, Verily I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So it's the recognition, for me anyway, that things are in a place in our country where the old ways are being challenged. And in a very real way, they're dying. 
And this causes upheaval as we can see that we are experiencing. But as evolution has shown us, my friends, the old must die for the new to be birthed. So what am I saying? I'm saying that even though right now and for a while, this feels awful, that this is a necessary part of the evolution of our consciousness. This is a necessary part of the evolution of our souls and everything that is happening right now in our country is a part of the evolution of America itself and that we can trust this divine intelligence is at this moment and every moment working everything together for the greater good. Now, how do we know this? And I love this quote from Ernest Holmes. Did you ever see the law that causes a plant to grow? Of course you did not. And yet you believed in the hidden law of growth. Why did you believe? Simply because every year out of the seed time comes the harvest. To these souls who have dared to believe has come a definite answer. So how do we know this to be true, that things are working together for the greater good? It's our faith, my friends. It's trust. Again, it's looking back on all the things in our life and in America's life where things have fallen apart, where things have, woo, it, it, it's anything but good at the time, but how they have beautifully fallen back together. But I'm going to tell you this, it takes our involvement. And the involvement that I'm talking about today is from a spiritual perspective. Claiming that our lives are good and that they just keep getting better um, that definitely sets those energies into greater motion. Claiming that all things are working together for the greater good sets those energies into greater motion. You know, I can tell you just from my perspective sitting here today, this Friday, Paul and I are getting married. This is the Friday is the fifth anniversary of our first date together. So it's significant for us. But many of you know that um, I lost my second husband, Sean, um, very unexpectedly um, due to death. And I'm going to tell you, at that time, life did not feel good at all. In fact, that was the hardest experience I have ever gone through in my life. And there were times when I felt so low. I felt so sad. I felt so lonely and so separate from everything and everybody um, because that pain was so intense. Uh, but at the same time, I will tell you that there was also this part of me that knew, and this was with time. It took about, a, honestly, about a year for me to feel like I had really made good progress. But there was also a part of me that knew that I was young and that I, I desired to have relationship. And, um, it, you know, and at the same time, I couldn't imagine it. I couldn't imagine how could I ever love anyone. Um, the way that I love Sean. And, you know, obviously the rest of the story is here I am now and I'm getting ready to marry Paul. And I couldn't have imagined in my own mind how amazing a relationship could be. I mean, this relationship at this point in our lives, we're, we just feel so blessed with this. My point in sharing this with you is number one, to let you know that we are getting married Friday. It is going to be on my Facebook page at one o'clock. Um, but to give you that hope and that knowing that as we open ourselves up and claim that even in the midst of things being so crazy, that God is in the midst of it, love is in the midst of it, and that it is all working together for the greater good. We ourselves are helping to set those energies in motion. In closing, I want to share with you this quote by, again, Ricky Byers Beckwith. She said, when you rise early in the morning, get out of bed and raise your arms to the sky. Hear the chime of life ring through your body. Feel the grace of life from the inside out. And say these two things with me together. God is good all the time. And... My life is good, and it just keeps getting better. And so it is, and so it shall be. And I say to you, namaste. Now is the time in our service uh, for us to really move into this place of, of a, a high calling for all of us. You know, as Unity of Springfield, as churches in general, uh, attendance has been down. 
uh, financial income has been down for most churches. Um, and, you know, a big part of that I know for us is that we haven't been able to have our huge fundraisers that we usually have throughout the year. And we don't get income from other places. So it's from all of us stepping up and, and really leaning into the value of these teachings, the value of this ministry, and the value of, of what these teachings not only have done in our personal lives, my friends, but the, what these teachings have the ability to do in the life of our nation and in the life of this world. And that here we are in Springfield, Missouri, unity of Springfield, but we have, we have the opportunity to be a beacon of light in a big way. And you know what? That takes financial support. So I hope that you'll really lean into and pray about becoming a consistent giver if you don't already do that. If you can increase at all, that would be great. Think about putting Unity of Springfield uh, in your will, in your life insurance. And uh, if you have to give money at the end of the year, I hope that you'll include Unity of Springfield in that. You can give by going to our website at unityofspringfield.org. You can give through our Tithely app. You can give through PayPal at ccunity at sbcglobal.net. Or you can write a check to 2214 East Seminole, Springfield, Missouri, 65804. And to all of us who are a part of creating a ministry that is thriving not only today, but that we can create a solid financial foundation for generations to come. Thank you. And again, namaste. So I came to the fork of the river And I didn't know which way I should go I had no map, no compass, no driver Precious little information to show hard in this life to make decisions, it's an altogether common thing to fail, but as I survey my current situation, I decided to just go ahead and say, there is no one way, there is no foolproof plan, no fateful final chance, just wake up each day to the best I Confused quite often. Seems sometimes I hardly ever get it right. But I think life's about just facing fear and trying. So I just point my little boat to all the light. There is no one way, there is no foolproof plan, no fateful final chance. I just wake up each day to the best I can. When I hear the music dance So whatever you're facing Just remember this That control you've been craving cannot be Just take a long deep breath And surrender it You'll be alright You'll see There is no one way There is no foolproof plan
um, John Merrifield and uh, Mitch Brashears and Richard Ziegler and Blaine Stiles and uh, Mitch actually did double duty because Beck was doing the run yesterday morning when they were doing the practice, I mean doing the music, so he did the camera too. And I want to thank Paul Day always for being the guy behind the camera for us on Sunday mornings. Um, a few things I wanted to encourage you uh, to share this. Uh, video and to share the Sunday morning adult class. Also, when you're on, do a watch party. This is a really easy way for us to increase the amount of people who are watching us and thereby increase our congregation. So that would be amazing. Also, um, next Sunday morning on our uh, New Thought uh, World Religion, John Brocker is going to be talking about Tony Bain's book, Conscious Neutrality. And if you did not have the opportunity to uh, check in this morning. John Russ did an amazing job on the five basic principles of unity. Now, this is definitely one I would encourage you to share with your friends if they want to know more about what unity is about. Uh, fabulous job, John. Thank you so much. Also wanted to let you know that we will be here next Sunday, but the following Sunday, Denise Rosier is going to be our guest speaker and singer. So make sure to tune in on 1025 for that. Just a reminder, too, that we do have our unit teens and teens on Zoom Sundays at 1045. Five. And then um, our junior Sunday school, Rachel Willis, uh, is going to be on here at 1215 at the Unity of Springfield Youth and Families Group page. So let's now join in our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And we are so grateful. So now is the time in our service that we all get to stand up and we get to express the joy that we are alive with the Spirit of God, with our band. Get up and move that body. Here we go. One, two, three. is good and it just keeps getting better because God is good all the time. And I say to you, namaste.